This episode of the podcast is supported by Audible. You can download and listen to the world's best storytelling. I use it all the time to and from work. You can listen to audiobooks, original series and more on their free app. To get your free 30-day subscription, which includes a free book, click on the link in our show notes and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Today I had a great chat with Stuart Holt. We did a bike ride with his dad and a few other people around Southwest India about 14 years ago, which was really cool. Him and, uh, and a few colleagues have started the Kindness Movement and we hear all about um, their book called The Kindness Book, which they're giving to schools um, and kids write acts of kindness that they do for others and pass it on. Um, so really, really interesting. And Glasgow got it into all of the schools. So that could be the kindest city in the UK uh, which is great and then it's culminating in an exhibition at the House of Commons and so really fascinating I think everyone could do with a bit more kindness and being kind to people and enjoy it. Hey it's Lewis welcome to the podcast enjoy our conversations anytime anywhere. Cool and we're live. Stuart. Hello. Thank you very much for coming in. Did you take a sip of your coffee? Yes. <laughs> Terrible timing for the start. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thanks, Lewis, for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. It was cool. We did um we did a bike ride in India around Kerala. It's like five hundred kilometers with you and your dad and for a charity. And we were just saying it's like two thousand and four, I think. That would be right. Yes, about fifteen years ago. Crazy. That was crazy. And so Since then, I think we've both probably done loads of stuff. Um, But most recently, you're doing this kindness book. Correct. Which is cool. What is it? The kindness book is a book that travels around a school collecting stories of kindness told by children who go to that school. The way that it works is you give the book to a child and you ask them to recall a moment of kindness they've experienced with someone else in the school and they can do that through words or through pictures and then once they're done that they hand the book to the person they had that experience with and then that child recalls their own moment of kindness their own experience um, and passes it on to the person they had that experience with and the book travels around the classroom or the school collecting these different stories Um, of what kindness means to the different children that go there um, and as a whole becomes this sort of document of stories and experiences um, and also the relationships between the different children that tell those stories Uh, and that's what the kindness book is that's part one of the kindness book yeah yeah yeah. nice so you just so is that is it been going around schools already yes we're now in 600 schools 600 yeah and it's been translated in uh from english into dutch french german and spanish amazing yeah amazing and it's in all those different countries did you start it in the uk we started it with one school in the uk in november last year Oh, wow, that's not very long. Not very long at all. And it just really, really caught on. People really like the idea. People now, for example, Glasgow has adopted a book per school in every classroom. Uh, sorry, a, big, a book per class in every classroom in Glasgow. Really? So it's become the first, well, we've dubbed it the first kindness city. Man, I love but, that. That's uh, serious. But um, what, age, think, what, like, what age group do they? So this is aimed 7 to 12. Okay. Um, and we're now iterating it into different age groups and also maybe outside schools as well and looking at different sectors that it could that it could function in so, so yeah. maybe we'll move out of like children and into like into the corporate world corporate into world. you know what kindness can mean because i think we all you know um kindness affects all of us absolutely we started with schools because it's important to have experiences of kindness when you're a kid that's when it can have the most impact and certainly the inspiration for the book you mentioned my dad uh the inspiration for the book comes from my father. Uh, He died in January last year and we wanted to do something that would um, uh, memorialize and celebrate some of the values that he had and kindness was very dear to him. Uh, He had a very difficult and challenging childhood um, as a Jewish refugee born in Vienna in 1923 Um, but the stories of kindness that he told us and and shared with the world as he he lived his life um, 
were really profound and informed his values so and the way he lived his life so the idea of starting with children in schools um was also inspired by the kind of impact the long-term yeah. impact that can have on that. the way that you live your life so he told you stories of his childhood even with all the difficulties he remembered these acts of kindness that people were doing to him yes absolutely in particular um a story that he would tell would be about books as well uh, he loved books as a kid he would regularly go to the library as as a child um, and one day he was not allowed to go to the library anymore Jews were not allowed in the library um, and so um, he had but the the librarian who would always welcome him and say oh yeah. Robert you've got to see this new book or that new book met him on the street one day after he'd been banned from the libraries and he said three words he said I'm so sorry um, which was not the right thing to say perhaps given the, the, yeah. the circumstance but that touched my dad so much um how these small moments these small gestures can be so wide-reaching yeah no hugely especially at that age i think it's really important so in the book you can you write something or you write something that some, someone's done an act of kindness for you or well we like to keep that open in the same way that the what you know what is kind it's quite a loose and catch-all term which is which is part of its appeal. Um, yeah. How you choose to describe what kindness is, is it something that you receive? Is it something that you give? And, and what exactly is it? I think is for each of the authors to decide for themselves. And, you know, that's what storytelling is. You know, what is your story and how do you want to tell it? And it's the celebrating of each individual interpretation that's part of it uh, that makes it so interesting too. Interesting. And it's great, that, it's great that Glasgow and other cities are like promoting it into yeah. schools it's incredible like 55,000 yeah. children now are using this book which in the what is it six seven eight months or so yeah. is bewildering and lovely it's and, crazy and congratulations how did how did you go about doing it so you contacted like the local councils and and said hey we've got this great book so we've, we're part of I'm part of a group so I'm one of the co-founders right I'm Stuart Holt yeah. and um, my brother is Jason Holt and we together um, are the sons of my dad. So that, that the idea of wanting to do something yeah. it was something that we shared. And we and I work with uh, Ben Berger and Deborah Charles, um, who are um, part of this kind of core group that each bring a different skill set to managing this book. And uh, and it's together. So, so Ben Berger, for example, he does a lot of the day-to-day -day management of uh, fulfilling the, the orders and con communicating with schools. And we all have our different networks. And I think part Great. of the reason it's had such a wide reach is that we have these different networks that we're bringing together. Yeah. And in November, we're going to be exhibiting, putting on an exhibition in the Houses of Parliament um, of the stories that we've received back. Amazing. These beautiful little illustrations and stories of moments that were from these different kids from different walks of life, different countries, different places all around yeah. the world. Um, and we're going to exhibit them um, in, in the seat of power in, in London. Nice. That's really exciting. House of Parliament. Yeah. Are they going to send you the books that they've completed, some of these schools? Or like send you little snippets and you can create a really nice... Um, well, so we are taking, we're, we're building a central exhibition, a right. uh, central sort of sculpture, um, which is a more narrative based story. So I'm actually a filmmaker. So we're building this sort of film centerpiece of telling the story of the kindness book with intermittently with some of the stories that were received back, nice. um, surrounded by this exhibition of the books themselves that people can browse through. Amazing. That's really cool. It's going to have a really big impact. Have you visited some of the schools yet? Sure. I mean, we've all, you know, my brother and Deborah and Ben, we've all got our own individual networks. Yeah. I live in Holland. So I've been taking the book to schools around Amsterdam and Holland. And, um, and that's just been just a lovely means to interface with people that you wouldn't normally interface with in yeah. itself. And that's, yeah. that's very much part of, of what I love doing. But in answer to your previous question, Ben and my brother and Deborah have been really involved with engaging schools in London. And I, I grew up in London, so I've had this opportunity to yeah. like contact my yeah. primary school. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, no, not you again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, hey, remember me? Um, there's this book and, you know, and just a little bit of, of social media around it. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and it's amazing. I, there's a there's a real desire to try and do something like this, uh, you know, and try and try and bring kindness into the classroom for obvious reasons. And there's something, you know, it, there, there's a there's a desire to explore 
some of the themes that come out from bringing kindness into classrooms and into society and out into yeah. society. No, it's great. I mean, there's so many things that, I mean, when we, when you're, I run a headhunting firm and there's so many things in uh, young people aren't taught at school, um, various different things, but no, kindness, uh, kindness is great because you know, a little act of kindness towards someone in any walk of life. And it really, you know, you really build a, like a, a stronger connection. Uh, it's really, really important. And it's great. Really, really cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think that there's, you know, it's, I battled with the term originally. And so I've given it a lot of thought, you know, what is kindness? And it's, yeah, I think there the are three things, if I can just yeah. uh, lay out my, my, my thinking on what kindness is. I think it's what makes us human in a way you know that ability to consider our future to con- con- to be considerate of other people and you know often manifests in worry and anxiety but um that ability to be considerate is what kindness is all about you know what how am i imp- how are my actions impacting on other people and yeah and what can i do to it's also i mean for me it's interesting it's, it's about if you broaden it out a bit um in emotional intelligence and and when you start to to think about being kind to someone you then start considering how they're feeling what their emotions are um you know and some people are really bad at that some people are great at that but you can certainly improve it um because you see a lot of people they're just oblivious to their impact on others and just a little bit of thought about it goes a long way and then you also find that um reciprocity really makes the world go round and uh, and reciprocity is just just giving without expecting anything in return and you know if you're giving acts of kindness and making people feel nice about themselves you know you you then it's not completely selfish because you end up feeling really nice about yourself too but it really you know it's a really nice way to yeah to absolutely live. i mean like you know picking up the phone giving someone a call you haven't spoken to for a long time reconnecting with you yeah, yeah. you know that that yeah. that those are you know, I would say that it, it's it, it's a mild anti de- antidepressant, and it's very Definitely. healthy for you. Oh, hundred percent, yeah. Because you know, when we, we've reconnected and we haven't seen each other for years, and then it you know it brings back, we brought bring, bring, brought back really nice memories, you know, of our trip and all these things, and uh, you know, it was only like a, a week or so, but still, you just remember these like nice moments, absolutely, in and amongst all of the other stuff that's going on in the world, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, kindness is kindness is very important. Also, I think that. You know, to be kind to someone also so often involves you having to, having to go below the surface area of a surface of a person, below the skin level, and like you know, look deeper into a person. And that's a mild form of like activism as well. You know, to be yeah. kind is sometimes, you know, in a world where we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people, it's nice to go deeper than skin deep. Yeah, no, that's true. That's and, true. And, and why do you think storytelling is so important? Because that's obviously like the theme with everything you're doing, right? With the film, with the book. Well, you know, I mean, you've got this podcast. The storytelling is, we're living in an amazing age of storytelling. Um, And what's interesting about that is I think we're telling, we're telling stories all the time. And a lot of them are very unhelpful. A lot of them are unstructured and um, no, they don't serve us. But to give some structure to the way that you tell your story, as you're doing right here with this podcast, is a very empowering thing to do. And giving that structure to children in school or wherever the book may go in the future is um, a very valid way of thinking, of rethinking about yourself. Um, so I think that it, it's, you know, it's very helpful to think about how do you tell your own story. And I also think listening to other people's stories is equally important. Yeah, that's true. Um, that exchange of information. So, um, I mean, a little example might be, so, you know, if you were to think, I don't want to put you on the spot. Go on. But maybe in your, you know, you can close your eyes oh, and I'm think closed. about a person that was kind to you. Are you closing your eyes? Yeah, go on, I'm closed. Yeah, I'm closed. Yeah. Okay. Can you think back to a person that showed you great kindness that really inspired you in some way in your life maybe yeah. you want to share that story maybe okay not. i can actually share the story yeah. all right so my my earliest memory it's an interesting one but my my grandfather when i was when i was six or seven um he used to play backgammon with me a lot so he taught me backgammon and we used to play a lot and i didn't realize this at the time but he always used to let me win <laughs> um, and then i realized he used to let me win and i had mixed emotions i mean one was like one was kindness, the other was, um, how could he let me win? I wanted to win. But mostly it was like kindness and he was really kind and 
taught me well and I ended up having a lot of good like valuable life lessons from that experience but that was probably my earliest memory and then as you go through life you probably actually remember it's a bit a bit negative but you probably remember the acts of uh, like the negative experiences more than the good experiences I tend typically find um, but there's always like moments in life where people are really really kind yeah and they just stick into your mind yeah yeah that's cool it's good to recall that moment I think and uh yeah, yeah, those are good moments. It also yeah. just gets me thinking. It's like often, like you know, you sit down and because uh, life's so busy, you just forget to like sit down and just reflect on mm-hmm. what's been going on, what's happened, lessons mm-hmm. you've learned. I often find like when I'm running, I do quite a lot of running. Mm-hmm. Then my mind goes into this like meditative state, and then these thoughts just pop in and out. And that's mm-hmm. mostly when these memories just come in. Yeah, and it's good. And then the storytelling thing, super important. I mean, like we we do a lot of um, like storytelling in business is very important. Um, you know, certainly when we're representing companies and people, then advising on uh, job careers and how to approach interviews and these types of things. It's all about crafting your story and describing it in the right way. And then the podcast is storytelling. And I found re- really the last like four or five years, it's just got more and more popular, like podcasting and listening to people's stories. Um, I mean, it's always been obviously popular with film and TV and all these things. But with the audio and then with YouTube and things, I found like it's really just accelerated the last few years. Yeah, uh, well, it's funny you say that. I mean, I, I worked with one of my clients is uh, Philips. And oh, yeah. um, and uh, I don't know if you want to go into to that world, but but they, you know, the, the kind of work that I do is not typically associated with corporate work in terms of these sorts of storytelling. But as you brought it up and as you do these two seemingly quite opposed things podcasting and headhunting the main the main theme is it's a human interaction for me for me the, the key theme with everything i do and and the thing that motivates me most and gives me the most energy is uh, is people and so you know with uh, with headhunting i'm i'm dealing with people um you know and then often you know people like to work with people and so you're really like focusing on finding the right fit and all of these things um, and i get to meet a lot of people through my through my day job podcasting it's great because I sit down in front of someone and we have a chat about their story, uh, sometimes my story, mostly their story. But again, it's this human connection, this real conversation. Because yeah. you find with technology, you know, mostly it's like WhatsApp, text messaging, email, Insta, Facebook. But you get, get to decide, like you get to reflect on like the message you receive and then you can think about how to respond. Whereas with this kind of conversation, I mean, you just got to respond straight away. Yeah, and It's quite a skill. Mm. And uh, it's good. It's a really useful thing to do. And, and I like it. Yeah. Well, to add to that. Oh, yeah. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, and you, the Philips and the oh, Philips yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, OK. Yeah. So the Philips thing. Um, so what I did for Philips was was it similar to the kindness book, actually. So the kindness book is based on this idea of a trail where each person leads to the next person, basically nominates the next person. So Philips um, brought me in to make a series of 12 films where each person would take me to the most inspiring leader most innovative leader that they know and it was a nice job so it flew me around the world meeting all these innovative leaders at different hierarchies different places with different skill sets different skills and and also there was this question of the relationship between them and that film was was you know became part of their rebrand from um innovation from sense and simplicity to innovation you they changed their rebrand okay where it was much more people-led idea yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's interesting that I mean, that's great. Um, and you, I've, I've seen more and more firms. It's all about like, what's it like? Because every company is made up of people, right? I mean, if we, no company exists without people. And and really, like recently, like five years or whatever, probably a bit longer, people, are fo- companies are focusing on the people, what it's like to work there. You know, who, who are we? And that's so it's really interesting mm-hmm. that. And you really buy into that as well. Well, I th- yeah, of course. I think you buy into it because people, uh, there's there's a lot of apathy with, you know, tricks, you know, tr- yeah. branding tricks. I mean, yeah. there's amazing ways you can tell your story using, you know, 3D, whatever, you know, like yeah. virtual reality, whatever it might be. But, you know, nothing will ever replace an authentic story, you know, and the human face and, and something that people can, can relate to in that way. Yeah. Have you have you seen then a really like increase in those kinds of stories from from clients wanting to record these kinds of things and yeah absolutely I think people want to create things that are honest I mean actually and it's quite you know that's that's yeah. you know you know and we're, we're, it's definitely a time of change in terms of the advertising industry and the way that that is going and how people are telling their stories. Um, and the ability to tell your stories where the 
where where the technology is so allows you to do so much at the one end you have you know drones and all sorts of things that you can do at the tricks of the trades yeah. that's 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 not where i my focus is my focus is in um actually going maybe back a little bit and trying to uh to tell those stories of meaningful connection and yes there's a lot of desire to try and well brand needs to connect to its audience yeah yeah, um, yeah. No, no, it's great um, because even amongst all of this technological change and all this stuff, it still boils down to to these human connections and real stories and, and like proper conversations. And you know, when we're doing again, when we're when we're when we're doing a search, and you know, you speak to the client and the candidate, and I always ask them, you know, like how did it go? It's like really broad, open-ended mm-hmm. question, um, and always you get the same response. I felt like it went really well, or. I didn't feel like it went well. And you're saying, what, what do you mean by that? And, and they say, oh, I don't know, I just felt like I had a connection with them. And so always, you know, you find people are, are thinking about, can I work with this person? And is there a human connection there? Um, and then they buy into these stories and then they think about, you know, where can I fit into the story of this brand or yeah. some of that? It's just really, really cool stuff. Absolutely. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Um, so, so much of what I do, you know, I, I, I often get interviews with people that don't give interviews. It's one of the things that I think is like, I don't know what people might say about the way that I work, but it's always about being, you know, not about, mm, I don't know, the way you measure things is about that very personal level. Yeah, yeah. But it's very different being in front of a camera, right? Or behind a mic, because you used to be behind a camera and now suddenly you're behind. Oh God, well, the last <laughs> the last one I did of these was it was half in Dutch. It was in Holland. So how, <laughs> so how's, just your, so how's your Dutch? in English. It's, uh, well, I feel like I would win in a test with you, but definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so not that great. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it could be better. You yeah, know. Yeah. But it's different, isn't it? It's like, you know, when suddenly you've got a camera in front of your face and you're trying to tell your story. And That's then, true. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It really does get you thinking. Yeah, well, that's that's true. I mean, I'm, I, you know, when I make, you know, it depends. I work on lots yeah. of different types of projects. Yeah, and, yeah. But the ones where I'm trying to have, have a connection with, with an individual person, uh, the questions that you ask are really important. And the way that you listen is the key. And, you know, you can make the camera dissolve. That's true. You can. But not these microphones. They're quite... Yeah, these like, are serious microphones. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And it, it's all of the stuff you're doing uh, video. No, well, no. I mean, I'm doing the kindness book. Uh, that's a that's book. That's true. Yeah, yeah. No, no. And um, I'm doing some more YouTube orientated stuff, which is a little bit more of my personal interests. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. And then, and then there's sort of like a YouTube channel. Yeah. So I'm doing these. I'm doing trails basically, but I'm doing trails where I'm exploring things that I like to explore, rather than necessarily what my client is asking me to explore. Okay. basically so what, what are trails a trail is where one person nominates the next so that trail where oh, right. if i were to say lewis who is the most inspiring candidate that you've ever worked with you would say great question i probably wouldn't know the answer no i do um the most inspiring candidate wow well if they were well, okay, listening well, everyone yeah. is but <laughs> i get inspired by everyone i wouldn't say there's an ad as there was like a an outlying inspiring okay. candidate but. and with that caveat no no you don't no. have that <laughs> i couldn't say i couldn't say but um but to put it another way your grandfather teaching you yeah. um you know, who you know w- wouldn't it be interesting to know who his would have been for yeah, example yeah yeah like a mentor someone who you look up to and that's yeah. what the trail is you yeah. would i would then go and and meet the person that he might have told me about oh, nice. and you then yeah. that person yeah. would have told me it, uh, who they're most inspiring in the person. that's what a trail is and in that way it's like basically building a community around a, a linear way of doing things rather than than this mass it's a bit more youtube it's more one-to-one yeah. than yeah. opposed to what do you think you of know? youtube as a platform I, I love it i mean it's really useful it's, it's yeah. it takes a while to kind of find out where you know how to how to work with it but like i say like whereas television was you know here I am and I'm performing to this world and this mass audience, you know, much more like a performer on a stage. YouTube is like, you know, here we are and yeah. we're exchanging this this information. And, and I think that that is, that's, that's a wonderful thing. It's crazy. And you can, I mean, you can just do it on your, on your phone. I mean, the, the way it must have changed for you since you started doing these things. I mean, even with this podcast, you know, you take a laptop, in fact, you can do it on your phone. We started on, yeah. I started with my phone and, uh, and these lapel mics for like 20 quid or something. But it's amazing what you can produce and, and publish now. In fact, really, really interesting. And then for the first time in history, it's interesting that to learn, you used to have to be able to read. And nowadays, you just have to listen and watch. Yeah. 
and it just reaches such a, a big wide audience absolutely and to think what impact that's going to have in the way that teachers teach in schools yeah. and how we're going to learn and how we're going to retain information and the democratization of education and you know and the workplaces uh, it's it's really cool that brings us nicely back to schools how can schools get involved in the kindness book and so if you know a school or work with a school or would like this book in a school that your kids go to or are a kid and wants it in your own school uh you can go to the kindness movement dot co dot uk or you can email stories at uh the kindness movement dot co dot uk and let us know about you can also find us on facebook as well and you can let us know your school or you can tell us your story i'd love to hear what story you might have perfect and then when businesses finally get round to realizing that they need to be really kind to their employees <laughs> they can then do the same thing and it can be passed around we're, we're yeah we're redesigning the book for yeah. other age groups as well um and other Amazing. sectors so yes we're looking at a corporate um, kindness book awesome. as well and then how can we see the um exhibition so that's happening November the 18th, I believe. And that is going to be the Houses of Parliament. Nice. So I don't know. I need like some security uh, pass yeah, or might. something. To get <laughs> well, we just, we just actually did a crowdfunding campaign for, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, for the, for the ex- curating of the exhibition itself. And you should itself. pass your target. And- we, yeah, we've got 112% of our target. Nice. Yes. If you're an investor in the crowdfunding campaign, you'll be invited to the, to the exhibition. I'm not yet, but I'm going to be. How many people invested? Um, um, I think it was close. It was re- it was really lovely. I mean, you know, crowdfunding is a is a mechanism to engage with with uh, it's a nice marketing uh, yeah. as well as raising funds. Yeah, it's a great way of structuring your story. It's yes. a great yeah, way yeah, yeah. of of also engaging and uh, you know your network in this you know legitimate space. Yeah, and then there's also the the outreach where it can go beyond your immediate network into the wider sphere. And so I think we have got about a hundred people investing, which is really amazing. Um, and which what which one did you use which platform kickstarter kickstarter yeah, yeah. kickstarter yeah. you know it's so yeah it works like that way you know it's really a job crowdfunding yeah. is really a, a you know a job in itself where you engage your media network then you engage your wider network and press and, and, you, and you know have to you have the constant messaging and and this 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 process and it worked and it paid off was that the first time you've done it no i've raised money for i did a film in 2016 called i heart usa about the u.s presidential election um, is that donald trump's uh, yeah donald yeah. trump over Hillary Clinton yeah. and I was in New York and I cycled a heart shape around Manhattan, Queens and Brooklyn. Wow, man. Um, on the day of... You cycled the, a heart? Yeah, I cycled. So you, like the, the route you took? Yeah, the route I took. So I basically got a map yeah. and I drew a heart shape on it. It's not the first time I've done this. I Heart Films is a series that I've done, but I drew a heart around this map which, so I don't know where actually I'm going to be taken, but there's sort of, you know, a method in the yeah, in yeah. it. And I cycled, it was 60 miles, 65 miles, and I cycled it on the day of and the day after when the, when the results were announced of election day. So I document, and I had a film crew with me and stuff, yeah, yeah. And, I was fil- and I was cycling around New York, and I documented that. Well, it wasn't quite a mood swing. It wasn't quite polarized in that way. Yeah. But I documented the reactions of people off the street that I happened to meet on the heart route. Yeah. Um, and did you say like, hey, what do you think of the... Uh- yeah, it was well, you know, the day of the election was this sunny blue sky day. Everyone was wearing Hillary Clinton t-shirts. Everyone was super optimistic. Yeah, we're going to have our first female prime minister, like, um, uh, president. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like uh, this, this incredible day and then you know come two o'clock in the morning um you know and uh me and my dop director of photography we're like we've got a story like a different story you know we thought we were just like documented something else and and then the the, the story shifted and the next day was this rainy cold wow <laughs> there. so it was really you know the setting couldn't have been more and these sort of, these clinton supporters probably were ri- ripped off their t-shirts to reveal their real donald trump well t-shirts underneath. <laughs> fun you know funnily enough you know the, the there were a lot of depressed people the next day but it was more yeah like i said it was more nuanced than that you know there's this new york sort of attitude like ah oh, you know well there, new york's you know, much more um democrat Demo- yeah. yeah and i was aware that i was filming this particular segment but that yeah, wasn't really yeah. the point it was a no, way no, it, was, it was kind of a love letter to new york it was a way of exploring the city it was a way of exploring a city on a day that a lot of people were out in the streets because it was voting day but it ended up being this film also about 
how the city saw itself you know all the people that i met anyway oh it's great and it was yeah it was very interesting so we went through russian parts of new york you know um down by brighton beach and there were there were like fairly more trump supporters yeah, and yeah. you know and we got a it was a lovely thing to do and it was great to turn it into a, a story yeah amazing thank you very much for coming on Welcome. Um, thank I you very much for having me. Pleasure. I look forward to coming to see the uh, the exhibition at the House of Commons if I get allowed in. <laughs> of course. And then um, the invitation in the post. Thank you. And then um, I'm going to get my daughter's school to get involved. Thank you. Pleasure. That was really good. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.